Sensex up 92 points, Nifty up just 23 points today. Global brokerages place their bets on the Indian market. Goldman Sachs says Nifty to rise by 10% to hit 20,500 by next year end. CLSA goes a step ahead, says Nifty will hit 21,850. Business Today TV, an exclusive conversation with Saurav Mukherjee of Marcellus, says he does not expect tech startups to do better anytime soon, shares his mantras for successful investments. Hindustan Motors planning a big return to Indian roads in a modern electric avatar. The CK Birla Group company has signed a memorandum of understanding to implement its plans. For the 80-year company, it will be a second coming after its sole product, the Ambassador, was edged off the roads by more nimble competitors. Even millennials will struggle to remember it. Ambassador the grand dame of Indian roads, which ruled the Indian auto market with an iron fist till the 1980s. It was a darling of the Indian ruling class, signifying ultimate power, peaking in power trips atop the Raisina Hill. For the Aam Army, the ambassador was an elusive beast. Based on the decades-old Morris Oxford, the car weighed more than a ton and was powered by a 1500cc engine, belting out measly 36 horses. But this did not stop it from being the ultimate object of desire. With waitlist running in two years. In this tiny car, the Maruti 800 was born in 1983. The Japanese hatchback slowly but steadily etched out the ambassador, relegating it to history books by 2014. The Ambassador brand is now owned by Peugeot, which bought it for 80 crore rupees in 2017. Hindustan Motors, meanwhile, is intent on a comeback in an electric avatar. The company's share price shot up 10% in trade today, hitting up a circuit on news that it has signed an MOU to enhance production of electric vehicles. Little is known about the deal, but it has been enough to enthuse Dalal Street. EV vehicle is the uh, new theme for the automobile uh, sector and uh, the kind of announcement uh, as you are discussing about this Hindustan motor, uh, it's a really going to a uh, game changer for the company and uh, looking at the price action uh, in today's session, stock is now upper fridge, uh, but uh, looking at the overall setup, it's almost uh, 15 week breakout uh, on the weekly chart and looking at the price action, we believe that you know if it continues to hold above 17 uh, rupees 50 paisa, then possibly the next target for the stock would be around 22 to 24 on the higher side. The required infrastructure to make the new electric vehicles is already in place. The company still owns the Uttarpara plant near Kolkata, though its size has shrunk to 295 acres from 700 acres. Rest of the land has been sold to Sriram Properties and Hiranandani Group for commercial developments. The company also has around 300 employees on its rolls and despite accumulative losses of around 150 crore rupees as of 31st March 2022, Hindustan Motors is largely debt-free. According to reports, the new EV project could entail an initial investment of 3 to 400 crore rupees money which Hindustan Motors apparently has from its land deals. Bureau Report, Business Today Television. Bengaluru-based EV startup Praveg Dynamics is all set to introduce its first electric car, DeFi eSUV. A range of more than 500 kilometers on a single charge potentially slots it with the likes of Tesla. The company claims the battery can be charged to 80% in just 30 minutes. What we have here on our hands is actually an exceptional uh, vehicle. I mean, the all new Defy, the car is called Defy. So, the all new Defy is essentially it's automotive reimagined. It's okay. reimagined to be exceptionally performant, amazingly featured, and it's, it's surprisingly rugged, which is a, a key requirement for India, you know. 
and a lot of other other nations actually in the world so you got to meet the most sustainable and privacy respecting vehicle ever um it's got 500 kilometers of range it goes 0 to 100 kmph in 4.9 seconds it's got five star safety so what defy does really is deliver a fantastic way to uh, uh, move work and relax all three things uh, since we spent so much of our time on the road uh, essentially Indices ended flat today after remaining in the green for most of the day with November expiry looming tomorrow traders prefer to stay low bank and media indices climbed the most with PSU banks jumping a percent metal and IT ended in the red while FMCG also struggled but ended flat the sensex ended 92 points higher at 61511 while the nifty was up 23 points at 18267 top gainers today apollo hospital hcfc life jsw steel bajaj finance and state bank of india on the losers list dani enterprise dani ports hero motors power grid and tech mahindra the laggards um, led there by a couple of those adani group names it's a typical i told you so story analysts who were drowned out in the euphoria of new age tech ipos are having their voices heard again one such voice is saurav mukherjee of marcellus investment managers who had warned investors against investing in companies without a positive cash flow business today tv's rashna dhanrajani caught up with saurav listen in I've never quite understood why people spend so much time thinking about the level of the stock market to the extent you have a country where the economy is growing 6-7% at real terms corporate earnings are growing 15 to 20% naturally the stock market will oscillate up over the stock market will grind up over time the issue is not whether equities will hit fresh highs they will hit fresh highs repeatedly in your and my lifetime the question is can you and i and your uh, viewers can they make money consistently from investing in the indian market the marcellus proposition has been yes you can make money consistently in the indian market if you invest in companies which are clean well managed and have dominant franchises so distinct from whether the market will go up yes it will distinct from that is the question can you consistently compound our pro proposition is yes you can and that's something which we have written about in our books whether it be diamonds in the dust or coffee can investing uh, we see this trend that the startups that we one year ago saw uh, get listed on the on the bsc or the nsc and now where the lock ins have ended the valuations have dropped what do you have to say about that Uh, nothing new here right uh, every decade uh, the indian stock market finds a, a new pra paradigm to get worked up about and then the paradigm crumbles uh, in less than less than a couple of years we saw this uh, same story play out with power and infrastructure and the movies replaying this time with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, tech enabled stories uh, if a company doesn't generate cash flow if a company is never generated cash flow uh, it's unlikely that it will generate cash flow after you buy right so everybody cites uh, companies like amazon and on the back of the one spectacular amazon a lot of other uh, a lot of other uh, low quality companies have have floated but there's only there's only so much lipstick you can put on a pig Uh, and i think our stock market has probably done that in a little bit of excess yes there will be successful tech enabled companies in our country but out of every 10 aspirants one will succeed the other nine will destroy your wealth and therefore again i go back to the same proposition look for companies cleanly managed competently run dominant franchises and the dominance manifesting itself in superior superior cash flows coming out of the company very few tech enabled companies have done that unfortunately Uh, 2020 was a year where Indian markets outperformed its global peers. Do you see this momentum sustaining, or where do you see we're headed now? So as I just said in the presentation to PMS Bazaar, right? Our point of view is that what we are going through is very similar to America in its heyday, 1880 to 1930. We're joining the country up, not just physically joining it up, financially we joined up, digitally joined up. Uh, tax evasion is being cracked down upon. We are formalizing the economy. Cost of capital is coming down. This confluence of factors is very, very powerful. Very few large economies can hit so many buttons. at the same time uh, given that the rest of the world doesn't seem to have anything remotely comparable my reckoning is for several years to come now india will be the world's fastest growing large economy you said while investing we must have three categories where we should judge the company by it should be clean it should be clear if you could expand on that and which are these companies that you see in the current times right so so the cleanliness aspect is the account should be clean the promoter shouldn't be stealing from the company's books right self evident if you give, give your money to a crook you ain't going to see your money ever again secondly you need to see a track record that the 
the promoter, the management team actually is competent. And the simplest way to assess that is look for companies where return on capital exceeds the cost of capital over long periods of time. There are actually very few companies in India which meet these first two criteria. If you ask me in my uh, 14 years in the country, I've seen no more than 60 companies who meet this, meet this double criteria. In addition, to compound your wealth over and above cleanliness and, and good management, you're looking for dominance. The simplest way to understand dominance is you're looking for companies who charge their customers 20, 30, 40 percent higher than what the competition charges and yet not a single customer walks away. Right. So if you get these three ducks lined up, clean, competent, dominant franchise, uh, it is relatively hard not to make money provided you're a in patient investor. Uh, what do you think one should do in this new, in this entirely new age tech space where the doors for selling have just opened up? As I said, if a company doesn't make cash flow, uh, it's not really a business that I can invest in. So difficult to sell something that we haven't bought. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I, I simply can't get my head around how people buy companies which don't generate cash flow. To be fair to investors in tech, this is a standard challenge in Indian markets, even in sectors like power and infrastructure, uh, 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 broadly in the Indian stock market, free cash flow generation is very scarce, right? If you take the BSC 500, there'll be barely 60 companies which generate cash with any frequency. It's not only Nike, but share of uh, several new age digital companies like Paytm, Delivery and Zomato are in focus after their lock-in period ended this month. Ever since the lock-in expiry, investors have been diluting their stake in these counters. Where are these stocks headed and what should investors really do? My colleague Tanya Aneja spoke to Divam Sharma of Green Portfolio. Listen in. So Divam, um, SoftBank sold 29 million shares of Paytm through a block deal. Lighthouse India has been selling Nika shares of late and shares of Zomato also took a beating after the company's founder, Mohit Gupta, resigned from the company. So help us understand what's really happening uh, in these counters and where are these stocks headed and what should investors do at this point in time? So uh, as, you, as we all know that uh, these type of companies uh, came to the Indian IPO markets in 2021, yeah. And uh, the markets had not seen these type of companies uh, ever before, right? In US, we still have examples where there are a lot of such type of companies who are there, who have, uh, who are non-profitable, are going fast, and the markets are aware of these the operations of these type of companies. When you come from a private equity background who has a primary target of growing the company to as much as possible, and uh, to an environment which is an post ITO environment where there are retail investors, where, where there are a different set of investors who target profitability, who target uh, valuations. Uh, it's it's a different ball game altogether, right? Okay. So, uh, so the idea here is that these companies, uh, the PE investors who were early investors, uh, they, they saw this type of a growth. Now, uh, a lot of these investors like SoftBank is having some issues in their own fund. They are target now targeting uh, like cash generation from selling off their different uh, investments. Now, uh, the, the mandate has also changed over the period that uh, 2021 was a very high liquidity period. And now it's a, it's a period where the investment funds, not only the uh, post IPO investment funds, but also the pre IPO investment funds are targeting profitability and matching it with growth. So the DNA changes for these companies all of a sudden, right? Now, uh, earlier you were targeting the targeting growth only. Now you, are tar you have to target growth along with uh, uh, profitability and sustainability of the business. So, uh, so that is having a beating on the stock prices now. Let's take a very quick break. When we come back, what does top uh, tax guru Ved Jain think that the government will do on the tax side in the budget? Ajay Devgan star Adrishan 2 was off to a good start with an opening day collection of a piece 15 crore net. Solid action. I have heard this every year. Police are here, they are here, they are here. But what do you get? Nothing. 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 Nothing
पापा वो पुलिस आ रही है वो बहुत चालाक है उसे सोचने का टाइम बिल्कुल नहीं देना The Abhishek Patak directorial recorded the third best opening post the pandemic beating Ram Sethu and Bhool Bhulaiya 2 leaving behind Brahmastra and Suryavanshi. Bachpan se bhuto ke beech pala bada hu main. Ma khade khade mera muh kya dekh rahe ho? Dekh lo. Abhi se baat karo. Aapke piche jo do aatmaye khade hain unse baat karo. That's not all. The second day collection saw a growth of 40% and earned close to 20 to 21 crore rupees. Wo piche ke raste se kyun aa rahe hain? कहीं आपने भाई को तो आपका गार्डन काफी इंटरेस्टिंग है देख के कुछ याद आ गया मुझे तो लगा था पुलिस ने ये केस बंद कर दिया है पर वो तो अभी तक छानबीन कर रहे हैं जब तक हम जिंदा ये छानबीन चलती रहेगी फॉर द एनवर्स अजय हैज रिप्राइज हिज रोल एज विजय सरगांवकर इन द फिल्म एंड इट इज एन ऑफिशियल रीमेक ऑफ द मोहनलाल स्टार ऑफ द सेम नेम थिएटर में कार्य ഒന്നും പറയണ്ട അതിന്റെ പുറത്ത് കുറേ ലോൺ എടുത്തു വെച്ചിട്ടില്ലേ ഞാൻ അവിടെ തുടങ്ങി ദി മൂവി Welcome back. The industry is not only seeking a cut in income tax rates in the coming budget, but also rationalisation in the much uh, reviled securities transaction tax. This comes on the heels of an earlier Business Today TV report that the government is having a relook at the capital gains tax. Business Today managing editor Siddharth Zarabi spoke with renowned chartered accountant Vaid Jain for more on this. I would say to simplify it in the best possible way, one when one my proposal will be that. Two year, less than two year is a short term, and beyond two year is a long term. That's so simple. We don't make any distinction between any asset, movable, immovable. We simply say, if you have held the capital asset for a period of more than two year, then it is long term, and then it will be a short. Term. So simple. The formula should be clear on that part. And in case it is a long term, then the tax rate will be two rates: one productive and non-productive. If it is a productive investment, then 10 percent. If it is non-productive, then it is 20 percent. That's a split rate. And for a short term, no concession, stayed away 30 percent. That's the rate should be there. I believe ideally that can be the best model for the taxing the capital gain. What we think about it, because okay. short term by and large is not really a capital gain. You make money by churning out. And that's why it should be flat rate of 30 percent. There's no reason why concession rate should be applied to capital gain, short term capital. Gain. I want you to quickly explain one point in terms of the rates. at this stage uh, do you see the need to increase the rates or unify them and moderate them see idea is i believe to simplify and to remove complexity in the uh, capital gain tax structure rate of capital gain i don't think that's the idea And that I think that in the way back I think 2018 we have already done that exercise where we have taxed our own capital gain arising on the uh, listed share. I don't think the objective at present looks to be to increase revenue. What can be an idea? I see uh, Indian model has to be different than the advanced country. We must keep this in mind, developed nation, because US and Europe follow the different model and they do not allow you uh, if you uh, to carry over the increase in value as we do in India. If you have sold one asset and you have invested in a new asset, the capital gain get fully exempt. That we have not followed the model uh, in US and Europe. That way, because India still being a developing nation, we need a large chunk of investment. Okay. And if a large chunk of investment, not only from FDI, FII, but from the Indian investors, small scale investors. So we need to encourage people to come more and more to the capital market. So we cannot uh, follow that model of developed nation. That's why I said that in case it is more than two year. Let's have a congestion rate of tax, and that encourages people to invest more and more in India. That's the idea, basically. With the India-Australia free trade agreement in the bag after ratification by the Aus Parliament, all eyes are now on the free trade deal with the United Kingdom. The deal was to uh, have been signed before Diwali, but political instability in the UK prevented it from happening. Kevin McCall of the UK India Business Council spoke to Business Today TV about the road ahead. What is the latest update when it comes to the trade agreements? Now we're being told that uh, there are going to be meetings lined up next month. Uh, what are you picking up? Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. As you, you said, the two prime ministers met in Bali last week, and they've reaffirmed their commitment to doing a deal. I think the negotiators are working, I think, urgently mm -hmm. um, towards a conclusion. And I think it's fair to say that there was a lot of noise around Diwali time. There was expectations that a deal would be done by Diwali. I think if we 
take a step back. What the government's actually agreed to do back in April was to complete the majority of the talks by the end of October, which they've done. So 14 of the 26 chapters have been provisionally closed, and now the negotiators are continuing to, to work at pace to try and close off some of the, you know, the, the stickier points that are there in the negotiations. So hopefully with the urgency and the pace that's in the discussions, we will see a, a deal emerge that's both comprehensive uh, in terms of sectors, so goods and services, and doesn't take us too far into the future in terms of the deadline. We want to see something happening in the near term, but we don't want to rush something just for the sake of speed. We want to take our time and get a deal that's comprehensive. Okay. Kevin, you did talk about deadline, which we'll come to later, but uh, um, what was this delay about? Was it an administrative de uh, delay or was it because of, of course, the political developments in the UK? I don't actually think there was a delay. As I said, the, the joint statement from both governments when the PMs met in April was to aim to complete the majority of the talks by, uh, by the end of October, which they actually have done. Um, the but, but we were looking at a signing ceremony close to the valley. That was never formally um, stated by the government. The aim was to complete the majority of the talks by the valley, which they, which they did. And I think, as you rightly indicate, there's been changes in Prime Minister in the UK um, and some turmoil uh, since sort of June, July time. But the, for the negotiations themselves, I don't think that actually impacted the negotiating teams because back in January they were given a mandate by the cabinets from both countries. So the negotiators continue to work to that mandate. And it's only as we approach this period now where we're getting bumping up against the edges of the mandates, that's when the politicians have to re-engage and to try and you know, do some of the, the political negotiating that will help us to land a deal. So I don't think the, the changes in the Prime Ministers in the UK um, over the last six months have actually derailed or slowed down the negotiations at all. But it is now the point, in the, the, perhaps after the next round of negotiations in December, that's, I think, when politicians may have to get more engaged in the process. The Dalera Special Investment Region in the Ahmedabad district of Gujarat had few takers in the last few years, but the recent announcement of a greenfield airport uh, has investment activity suddenly picking up. Even as uh, Gujarat goes through the election grind, Business Today TV's Chetan Bhutani brings you this conversation with Patik Patwari, President of Gujarat Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Dolora is now poised for, a, for, for the right position. I think, of course, it has it had to be uh, active much earlier. But somehow it got delayed and then it was struck by COVID. So we lost good two, three years out of that. But now uh, with the announcement of the Semicon uh, production facility that might come up in Dolera, and coupled with the uh, uh, the construction of the new international airport that is coming up there, mm. uh, we are definitely positive that the the entire industrial ecosystem in and around mm. Dolera would it so, sounds very promising. Mm. We have a six road connectivity that is coming up between city of Ahmedabad and Dolera. So, if these things what are talked about uh, are actually going to happen, this is going to change the scenario. The entire Dolera has been. Of course, we do do not deny that. It, it was dead for a couple of years. Mm. But I think the traction which has now it gained with uh, the investments coming, there are, Tata Power is already there. Mm. We have uh, RE uh, Industries which have established their production line. And uh, soon we uh, will be seeing the Semicon uh, production facility coming up there. Mm. Uh, so I think, uh, yes, Dolera, we are very hopeful that in the coming days it will be, uh, it will be a destination like what Sanand has now become mm -hmm. for, for the automobile industry mm -hmm. or Vitlapur, uh, matter of fact. Similarly, for the next-gen industry, it is Dolera that is going to be the destination. But uh, uh, there were issues about, a lot of corporates raised issues about the, uh, the cotton soil that, that's yeah. the problem there. So, yeah. uh, uh, I'm, you cannot change the soil, yes, but can you can change the location. So, uh, will, Dolera, will Dolera be Dolera or probably it could be shifted to another place? or the whole infrastructure idea could probably go to another place. Is there any kind of uh, talking on, on like that, sir? I think uh, the strategic position with Dolera currently holds. Mm. Uh, because Ahmedabad being the being the industrial capital or the finance capital of the state, any proximity and the development if it has to happen, uh, it has to happen around Ahmedabad. And Dolera is the area where you have sufficient land available as on date. So we don't see any other option other than Dolera right now where the development could happen. Sanand is now getting uh, quite uh, saturated. Same is with Vitlapur and Mandal, where the automobile industries have come up. So, 
according to uh, this we believe that dollar i is well positioned now uh, the development will happen it will be slow uh, talking about the black cotton soil what you say it does definitely uh, that is increasing the uh, the construction cost there but i think the industry which are coming up there and the kind of incentives the state government is offering mm -hmm. on the land prices we see a win win situation for both for the state and the industries to come up in dollar uh, pratik ji i'll also i want to ask you about uh, how gujarat can probably become the next destination after maharashtra for industries because uh, there have been really various talks about how gujarat will is poised to develop as an industrial hub and because maharashtra has some saturation problems some water problems which gujarat really doesn't have so uh, what's your opinion on that and when do you see that happening of industry uh, destination being preferred to to gujarat over maharashtra uh, see uh, there has been lot of political tug and war uh, and lot of uh, shouts around the various projects which have recently come to gujarat mm. and in this uh, in this name uh, throwing game we have forgot the inherent strength the gujarat has always had an upper edge which we always had uh couple of years back when uh, when tata motors moved from uh, singru to sanan people thought that this is something which is uh, out of the box you should have not done that so much uh, offers to a corporate should not have been made today we see the results of one strategic move by the then uh, cm and now the honorable prime minister of the country narendra bhai modi ji that he made sure that he attracted one and then many followed So uh that that's the strategy the businesses work. That's where we leave it on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching.